Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Inside Today's Boardrooms, presented by Diligent Institute, your source for the latest and greatest in corporate governance, all in 10 minutes. I'm your host, Lisa Edwards, Executive Chair of Diligent Institute, and today I'm joined by Anthony Johnson, Founder and Managing Partner at Delve Risk. Anthony is also a board member at CyberAB and Code VA, a tech advisor, and a former CISO, so I'm looking forward to his thoughts. Anthony, welcome to the show. Thanks so much. Um, ha happy to, to be a part of this today. Really appreciate it. Great. So, so Anthony, in late February of this year, NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, released an update to their landmark cybersecurity framework. And, you know, many of us will have heard of the five components of that model, identify, protect, detect, respond, recover. But this is really the first major update since they created that framework back in 2014. So could you start by giving us a quick overview of what the NIST framework is and what its goals are? NIST is, um, it, it's, NIST USF is, is, is one of my favorite frameworks, actually. Um, there's a lot of frameworks. There's a lot of ways to think about cybersecurity. Um, and the, these frameworks in general try to make things a little simpler, right? They try to make it so that people are speaking a common language, right? I kind of think of them as, you know, the Rosetta Stone, if you will, between geeks and the rest of the world here. I love that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just an easy way to, to translate, right? Um, and actually, just to, as, as a caveat, I think having a security leader or CIO who themselves is a Rosetta Stone is one of the most important things for any board member to, to, to make sure they're engaging with. Um, but what NIST-CSF does is it tries to take a, a, a lot of these industry best practices and give organizations a, uh, a tool. And they've come up with, you know, they have their, um, their, their, their guidance tool. They actually have, of course, the NIST documentation. Um, but they try to make it an easy way to, to understand and make sense of cyber. One of the big changes, though, that really happened with this, um, with this release was the expansion um, and the addition of, of govern, right? Um, so we've, you know, we've had the, you know, identify, detect, protect, respond, recover, um, and now you have govern. And um, some people, a lot of people talk about it here, I'm sure, are like, oh, it's fine. Hey, we're already doing that. And I'm like, ah, like, ah, there's, there's some nuance here. So um, that, that was kind of the big shift. Yeah, I love that too. And I love how in the, you know, in the NIST circle, as they have those components going around the outside, they actually chose to put it on the inside of the circle as opposed to a specific individual step. It's like, no, we actually want you to think about the governance of this process all the way through and every bit of the cycle and sort of impermeate that into the way that you think about cybersecurity. So I thought that was really, you know, a, a thoughtful way of, of even just illustrating it. Yeah, I, I, I think so too. I think, um, and I think the other big, big addition was, is really the expansion or emphasis on resilience and, and what, what that means. Um, part of the, the, the drive here is that cybersecurity is constantly changing. There's, there's so much going on. Um, and one, if anyone says they know everything about cyber, they are um, both wrong and a liar. That's like someone telling you they can guarantee that you're not going to get hacked. That's exactly it, right? Um, but the, the, the reality here is that over the last few years, we've seen a massive, massive uptick in the amount of uh, um, attacks like ransomware that actually aren't just trying to steal data, but they're actually just taking down networks and then saying, hey, if you want to get back in business, you're going to pay us. And that's a, it's, it's a really, really painful situation. I've worked with a number of very large multi-billion dollar enterprises recently navigating that. And um, these frameworks help them kind of think about that. Yeah, I love that. So is that one of your big takeaways from this updates, this focus on resilience and sort of not just how are you going to avoid um, something happening to you, but really how are you going, how is your business going to recover from an incident if and when it does happen? I, I would actually almost go so far as to say, you know, in there a little, in, in, in the icon, you can almost have resilience as kind of in the middle as well, right? Like um, it's, it is such an important piece because um, and I'll, I'll tell you, just dealing with a large multi-billion dollar organization, we spent two months working not just with IT, but with the business because there are so many pieces that cyber and IT were doing the, these things and the business is like, hey, we need this. And everyone's like, oh my gosh, we, we weren't paying attention that this was a, a nexus process so critical. Um, and a lot of times, you know, um, it comes down to that one errant spreadsheet or the one person or one process that you realize like, wow, our company is very, very dependent on this. Um, so 
these types of frameworks help enumerate that, help you kind of think about how you protect that and recover very quickly. Yeah, I love that because I think like as you start to think about the recovery aspect too, um, you know, I like the way that you frame it as it also belongs in the center of the circle because it does then go back out to to recover quickly. It may mean that there wasn't lateral movement, which means that we properly segmented the network, right? It, it very well, very well could, right? Um, and so like there's just, um, I think the other the other piece that I, I think that makes NIST a bit different from other frameworks is that it really indexes on your overall maturity, right? Like the overall maturity of the organization um, respective to, to, to these, uh, these domains, um, which is, you know, we, we should probably talk about that here in just a second as well. Yeah. Um, so, you know, Nest is a really good starting point. It, it kind of gives, as you've said, this Rosetta Stone, it gives boards and C-suites something that they can anchor onto. And it has a really nice emphasis on the risk management component, which of course is a core function of any board of directors. You know, if, if you were sitting in front of a board right now, and it sounds like that is something that you do do, um, what would your advice be to, the, to, to those boards and to the senior leaders who are looking to get smarter on how they handle cyber risk oversight? Yeah, so um, I'm I would pr I'm probably going to get a lot of um, hate mail from the classic CISOs and CIOs of the world for saying this, but I would actually not recommend that board members try to read the NIST document. Um, it, it's 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 kind of like telling them, "Hey, have you read all of Basil?" And do you know what? Like like no, like don't try to read it. Instead, it, like you could, but it, it would be a good sleeper. Like if you if you struggling there, there's there's 200 pages of GDPR legislation while you're at it. Exactly. Right. Um, so um, maybe interesting, probably not, but, you know, not definitely not useful for them. Um, what I would say is I think organizations like like Diligent, great resource, um, attending conferences or talks where you have practitioners that are actually talking about the applicability. Um, and I would I, I would I would ask and challenge them to, to actually talk with their IT leaders, the security leaders. What are they doing different? Right. Like, hey. We were we're in this we follow this CSF cool you guys have talked about that in the past what is what are we doing different and if the answer is nothing we've already got that covered I would say that that's the wrong answer right um, the the important piece here is to um, is to understand that they're going to have to make some trade offs and one of the best ways they can they can really do that is to have a mastermind group have security leaders people that they know other board members and ask them like hey what are you guys doing differently, right? Um, and just asking those questions, being curious, you know, reaching out to people who are kind of doing something different um, or, or, or have shifted the program before them. I think that's probably the, one of the most important things they, they could and should do to, to stay up to date on it. Yeah, that's a really good thought. And I love the the notion of, of, you know, trying to get smart on certifications. But I do think there's also this sort of notion of day to day, um, you know, read the Wall Street Journal. And when there's a hack, you know, try to figure out, do you understand what happened? And, you know, you can take that back. It's probably every, it's probably every CISO's worst nightmare. You know, you walk in with your Wall Street Journal and say like, hey, could this happen to us? Um, but, um, but I do think that that is, you know, it, it's a, it's a way for board members to start to get conversant in the language of cybersecurity. Because to your point, you know, it is a slightly different language and sort of understanding what, you know, the terms and the, and the techniques and the TTPs and, you know, all that kind of stuff will start to soak in over time. Absolutely. And that, that's why I think, uh, like, for example, I have a, a good friend, a mentor of mine who um, has been spending the last few years building, writing AI, right? And I asked him, I was like, um, cybersecurity guy, I asked him like, how much time do you spend to stay up to date on the advancements with AI? He said he's spending three to four hours a day, a, a day, right? And he's super conversant and he's like, and I'm not even touching like, like the depth of this. And so, so again, you know, have, with board members having a, a mastermind group, a peer set to, to reach out and be like, hey, we're working through this. You guys are in this industry. If you see a Wall Street Journal, like, hey, do you have your resident senior executive nerd who can just kind of give you the the, the lowdown breakdown of what this actually means? Um, that's gonna that, that's gonna just accelerate their, their 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 knowledge significantly. Yeah, I love that. I think that's great. Um, 
as you think about either NIST or, you know, if you had a nugget that you could leave with people um, for, uh, for best practices or final thoughts, um, what would you uh, want to tell our audience today? Again, this is probably controversial in the, in the CISO world, right? But that's kind of what I'm known for. Um, I just kind of uh, break, break it down. We're here for you. We want it. We want the controversy. Thank you. <laughs> um, you can't be all things to all people. We, we, we know that as people in, 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 our, in our lives. And cybersecurity leaders often try to say that they can, right? They're like, oh, we're going um, to secure it and be safe. Like, what does that mean? Um, and NIST is, is really good about this. The NIST CSF framework is really good about this because for every, every control domain, there's a maturity level, right? Um, and the best analogy I like to use, Walmart does not compete on ambiance, right? Walmart competes on price very, very deliberately, right? You want ambiance? You go to Saks on Fifth Avenue, right? And you are not competing on price then. You're competing on ambiance. You're competing on, oh, I got a champagne with whatever, right? And for, for NIST CSF, we have to realize that there are trade-offs. We can't be a four or five. We can't be, so there's the, the, the action of, um, you know, partial, risk, informed, repeatable, and adaptive. We can't be adaptive to everything, right? So we have to know, and we have to make those trade-offs in advance to say, hey, we're, we, all, we need to at least be risk-informed. We, maybe we at least need to be repeatable. And then for these few things, we're going to be world-class, adaptive, super, whatever that is, right? But when a security leader and IT leader say, we're going to be top of the class on everything, it's an unrealistic expectation. It's not a serious conversation. And I think board members need to push them to say, no, 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 no. We're sacks. We know we're more expensive. What are we losing? All right, we're trading off on price. What are those trade-offs for the entirety of the NIST framework for CSF? I think that's what I would leave them with. Have that conversation. I, okay, that's great. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll wrap it with the mic drop of you cannot be all things to all people, either in life or in cybersecurity. <laughs> Thank you, Anthony, for those great insights. And everyone, please join us for another edition of Inside Today's Boardrooms next week. Thank you for listening.